All right. Today, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the What's in My Head podcast, real conversations with the people who made your childhood great. I'm your host, Julian, and today I am joined by Larry Kenny, the original voice of Thundercats, the Lionos, Snarf, Egbert, Jackman, the <laughs> Tug Mug, I knew I was going to slip up, okay. Taro, and this is Mr. Larry Kenny. Larry, how are you, sir? I'm fine, Julian. Thank you, and hi, everybody. Thanks for having me. Oh, man, it's my pleasure. Um, <clears throat> I guess we're just going to get straight to the heart of the matter, man. You were the original voice of Lionel. What does that feel like? Oh, it feels great. It feels <laughs> great. I, uh, of course, uh, you know, in, in, in our business, I'm a voiceover actor, obviously, and um, or, or any kind of an actor in, in our business, you, um, when you do something, you don't know if it's a movie or a TV show or anything like that. Uh, you see that you have sometimes, if you're lucky, good material to work with, good writing, the animation's great. You got a great cast of people and all that, but that doesn't guarantee it's going to be a big hit show. And it certainly doesn't guarantee that 35 years later or whatever, uh, I'm going to be sitting here talking to you about Thundercats. You know what I mean? My point, Crazy. my point being is, who knew back then that I'd be sitting here on a? Of course, we didn't know about this stuff either. You know, computers <laughs> and and the zoom and all that, that stuff yeah. but it feels great to know that something i did so long ago you know it still it's, it still gives people pleasure well there's there's one thing because you brought up a really uh really good point 35 years ago nobody really knew that tv movies and they would have this cult-like following like they do you get these little yeah. sects <clears throat> of thundercats versus he-man thundercats was always better than he-man it's not you know firing shots anything <laughs> he-man everybody that created it. i just liked it better um, but there was one thing that I've seen them do over the years um, that's been really, really great. And that's bring back a lot of the original cast for anything from a cartoon, whenever they update it. Like, I think the first one was when you came on Family Guy back in early 2000s. I was like, oh, shit, I heard that voice before. They got him. And then 2011, when it comes out, you come back and yeah. then you saw that in The Flash. I don't know if you watched The Flash TV show. Did you ever see that? I'm not, no. So they brought back John Wesley Shipp, which was the original Flash from back in the day. And he played, <laughs> I know John, yeah. Yeah, he plays the current, um, well, they killed him off, spoiler alert, if you haven't watched it, <laughs> they killed him off. Um, but he came back and they did the same fan services. They got you to be the father of lion mm. What was that like? I mean, no. were you expecting that from Family I was not. I, I was not, no. And, uh, uh, what was that like? Well, it was it was very uh, exciting, and it really felt good because what they were doing, asking me to take part in the, the new Warner Brothers um, um, production of Thundercats, yeah. as you just said, they had me play Lionel's father, which I think was a genius idea. Very first good. of all, first of all, to have any of us from the original cast on that show, I think, was a, a good idea. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, because, of course, uh, fans of the original show are going to hear that. Oh, they're on it? Okay, well, listen, I'll yeah. watch it. I'll try it, you know. But also, it was just a, a nice homage to the, to the uh, not just to me, but to the entire cast and crew and everybody who was involved mm -hmm. in, in the original Thundercats, you know. They were, they were giving us a little nod. Yeah. You know? and, and, and you see more of that in the show uh, when there are little references mm -hmm. to the original uh, even there's even a reference in it to the original um, one of the original outtakes. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I thought I, I thought it was really great of them to you know to to look toward us and and not just say ah forget that old the original one you know this is a better one and a new one and all that. Yeah. It was fun. And if I can uh, take a little longer to tell you a story about that. Oh, of course. Um, uh, the first time anybody ever saw the. Um, first episode of the 2011 Thundercats. Um, uh, it was at the San Francisco Comic-Con mm -hmm. and they played it for a huge auditorium of, of people. I don't know, three, 4,000 people, I guess. Yeah. And it sounded like it from where we were backstage. When I say we, I mean me and the, uh, the other ca the cast of the new one, okay. a, a couple of them and uh, some of the producers. And so we were backstage and while they were playing the last part of this episode before we were to come out on stage. And at one point we could hear this enormous roar from the, the crowd, yeah. uh, you know, and people looking around wondering what it was because, because we couldn't hear just all the dialogue from back there. You know, we could hear 
there was a lot of things you could hear that it was on, but you couldn't understand what was being said. You understand? Yeah. So uh, one of the producers came over to me at that point and said, did you hear that? And I said, yeah, what, what were they cheering? He says, that was when they heard you say Thundercats ho. <laughs> and I just, you know, I, I, I melded, I, you know, kind of teared up a little bit because the audience there was giving an homage to the original show yeah. and, and to me, you know, and that really felt great. There's, there's something about it, especially with cartoons. They're so tied at the hip, I guess, with comic books. And when you've got a fan sec like that, you know, they bleed for these characters. They love these characters. And when you can sit yeah. here and just tip your cap just a little bit, you know, it's not much to reach out to you guys. And you see exactly. so many franchises, they don't do it for you guys. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, I guess it's always nice to see them just say, hey, man, we yeah. know where we come from. We know who started this. We appreciate what you did. And hopefully we can live up to what you guys have did. Um, exactly. It's always fantastic. Um, did you read for any other characters with the exception of the ones that I named off and butchered one of them right off the bat? Um, did you read for any other characters? On the original show? Yes. On the original show? Yeah. As I recall, I'm sorry. We'll do we'll do all of them, but we'll start with the original show. Okay, on the original show, uh, no, I read for uh, Lionel and Jackal Man. Mm -hmm. uh, the way they handled it was because they, were, they they interviewed hundreds of people in New York and hundreds of people in in uh, L.A. audition. I mean, you know, lots and lots of people. So uh, at my audition, I get there, and there's lots of other actors waiting to go in too and to come out. A lot of people. So uh, what happened was they gave you, uh, when you arrived, a synopsis of the show, because it was a brand new show. Nobody knew what it was going to be about, you know. Yeah. A synopsis of what the show was about, a little bit about each character. You know, if you get an idea in your head of what you think he should sound like. Yeah. And then they said, um, they, they said, um, when it was my turn to go into the booth, they said, uh, have you decided who you'd, you'd like to read for? Mm -hmm. They told us before you'll read for two characters. Uh, one Thundercat and one mutant. Yeah. Um, you know, Mumra's guys. Yeah. And um, so I said, okay, so I might as well, I'm going to read for Lionel. Mm -hmm. He's, I see here, he's the lord of the Thundercats. So yeah. might as well go for the big guy, right? <laughs> <laughs> and the um, Jackal Man, I saw the picture, the drawing of him. And for some reason, a voice jumped into my mind. I don't know if you're old enough to recall uh, Rocky and Bullwinkle. Oh, yeah. Or seeing Rocky and Bullwinkle. Yeah. Yeah. There was a character, Snidely Whiplash, yep. who was the arch villain and, and the, what do you call it? The, 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 the antagonist? Uh, he was the antagonist, yeah. He was the epitome of, back then, what we thought villains were, old-time villains, with yeah. the stovepipe hat, the cape, you know, the mustache, you know, like <laughs> curled up. It's like Dick so, Dastardly from Boomerang. Or exactly. From era. Yeah, that was the prototype of you know, oh, what was coming. So um, I, I had that voice in my mind. Mm -hmm. And and uh, then I started thinking, let's see, a jackal. What does being a jackal have to do with it? What, how do we, what do we think about jackals? Um, I always think about a s sly, wily, sneaky, you know, and nasty. So, yeah. so I kind of um, put those two together in my head and made Jackal Man sound like something like, uh, we must get the Thundercats, yes? <laughs> <laughs> That's where that came from. And for Lionel, of course, it's just my voice. Yeah. Um, we, were, we were to, when we auditioned, we were to not make the Thundercats sound cartoony, yeah. which is something you hear from directors all the time. It is a cartoon, but we want it to sound like a human being. When they they, that, what, does that sound, what does that mean to you? They don't want it cartoony. Well, they want a, a person who talks like this and not like this, or uh, <laughs> not like I am the Lord of the Thundercats. Yeah. It was my voice, Lionel's voice was just my voice, if you recall. Sore of the moments, come to my hand. I, Lionel, command it. A little more dramatic than I'm talking to you, but yeah, yeah they wanted to sound like a real person. And if you think about it, Chitara sounded like a, a, a young woman and the tiger sounded, a, you know. Um, so that's uh, that's what uh, uh, Lionel turned out to be. Just my voice, more dramatic. Yeah. And uh, that's another reason I thought it was cool when in 2011, Warner Brothers asked me to do uh, Claudius, Lionel's father. 
it was still my voice, but my voice is a little older now. You know, <laughs> my my real voice is a little older now, so it fit right in with that. Instead of going, um, you know, um, talking like Lionel, like I did for years. Now I'm talking like this. It's still my voice, but a little gravelly, you know, yeah. which my voice is now. So it worked out pretty well. I mean, I'd say so. You've still got one of those. To, when you hear, you don't even have to look. You just hear Lionel. You're like, oh, shit. I know exactly who that is. And, you know, yeah. you've got, like I said, that distinct voice. Yeah. yeah. Um, when you were, so when you audition for a role and then you get that role, do you have like things you're looking at? Because this is a brand new show. Like you said, nobody had seen it before. Yeah. Are there like things you're pulling from or, or actors or characters or something you see as like influence for Lionel? his cadence or anything like that? No, again, again, the cadence, the, 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 the tempo and everything was pretty much my, just me, just being a little more dramatic. The only time it was different is in the beginning mm -hmm. when uh, Lionel was still a little boy. Yeah. Uh, well, basically he, he was still a very young man the entire series, but he had, even when he grew up, he kind of had the, you know, because he was quote asleep for so many years. Yeah. I mean, coming to third earth. I think everybody knows the, knows the, the plot. Yeah, the story. And if they don't, they probably wouldn't be here watching us. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't. They didn't shame on their parents for one. So. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it was just pretty much my, my regular voice. Yeah. Well, I, I like seeing that because it, it's, it's always nice when you know because i talk to a lot of you guys and then they always say they leave a piece of something or they take a piece from whatever character and then it's them but they put another piece in their character or mm. into that character of themselves so it's always nice saying no man that was 100 percent me from, <laughs> from start yeah. to finish what you got was me so I, I like seeing the difference between a lot of you guys mm. so. yeah we're all different just like any any group of human beings you know some of us do this way and some of us do it that way yeah to be honest with you i don't really put that much thought into my no. character when i started doing them yeah uh, for one thing i'm too lazy to you know come up with something <laughs> and but i really you know i just i really i get the script and i think about it for a little bit and and of course once i auditioned and got the the part i knew that's exactly what they wanted because yeah. You know, do it the way I did in the audition. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And they re you refine it sometimes when you go to your first session. They say, we love the voice. Obviously, that's why we hired you for it. Uh, let's try making him, at least in, at this point, you know, uh, a little more sure of himself, a little less assured of himself. So they give you direction, but still with the, the same voice. So when I got a question, it's almost like a two-parter. Did you have more fun voicing Lionel or doing voiceover for Best Week Ever? <laughs> best week ever did i have more fun well gosh that's a good question yeah uh you're the believe it or not you're the first one who's asked me about best week ever since i started doing these zooms and yeah. phone interviews and all that kind of stuff so good question um i will have to say it was more fun doing best week ever yeah because yeah because remember like i told you Lionel was just my voice mm -hmm a little more dramatic and louder at times yeah. softer at times but that voice i came up with for uh, best week ever was so well it's almost cartoony yeah you know for those of you who don't remember or didn't never saw the show it was on vh1 for many years mm -hmm. and um i was the narrator and they showed all these various clips and stuff like that from tv shows and it's almost like youtube before youtube you know. I just was thinking about that. Yeah, that's a good point. It was before YouTube. That's where you'd go to see all those clips and everything. I'm going to have to write that down. <laughs> it's good. Um, so the, the, my voice on there was the show would start and I would say, it's the 3rd of January, 1989, the best week ever. <laughs> now, it was fun to do, but it hurt. Sometimes yeah. by the time I got to the end of the show, I mean, I recorded it beforehand, of course, but... Yeah. I'd be in the booth for maybe an hour. And by that last few minutes, it was really getting, really getting gravelly. So I had to always had to make sure I, uh, I didn't schedule a, a session too close after my sessions for uh, best week ever, because my voice would be a little bit gravelly and yeah. uh, might affect the way it sounded on the, on the next one. Now, when, when you're doing stuff like this, like I've always heard musicians, uh, they talk about how they, they keep their vocal cords or their voice really, really good. Yeah. Uh, I've heard a lot of them, they'll chug honey, you know, or they'll drink hot and tea. 
Uh, is there anything that you did to, to really help your throat after a session like that? That's all I, you mentioned the two things that I did. If, if, I had a, if I had a little bit of a rasp or felt something coming on, hot tea with honey and a little bit of lemon. Yeah. And I would keep that, you know, next to the studio. And if my voice does, does start <clears throat> getting a little gravelly like this, it, that'll smooth it right out. Yeah. Uh, other actors, again, we're all different. And I've seen actors who come in, not many, but I've seen a few who arrive at a session and they're doing the old, uh, Ah, 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 There's all kinds of uh, little little exercises that some people do to like to limber up their lips. Yeah. And to, uh, man, I, I just I clear my throat. That's it. <clears throat> okay, let's go. <laughs> I'm very very fortunate. My voice doesn't you know require a, a, a lot of maybe because it's my natural voice. You know, yeah. On a thundercast. Now, uh, I know you got a couple kids, and one of them I want to talk about a little bit later because she's one of my favorite people of all time. Me um, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you said uh, you said you had a son as well, right? Yes, Tanner. Yeah. So, how old was he when uh, when Thundercats was coming out? He was. When Thundercats started on the air in '85. We started recording it in late middle of '84. Took a while to get them all produced and on the air, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, and my son was born in in, uh, in eighty eight, so he was three, four years old. Yeah, he's he's uh, born a year before I am because I just turned thirty one. I was born in eighty nine. Oh, happy so birthday! A lot of, a lot of As a matter of fact, I saw it was your birthday just yesterday or the day before on the when I oh. went to your Facebook page oh, to check yeah. you out. No, it's uh, August thirteenth was uh, was my day, but thank you, I appreciate it. Um, but no, it's, it's always it's always funny asking you guys because I had Rob Paulson on a couple weeks ago, and then yeah, I was great. like, "What was that like?" And then he was like, "Oh man, my my kid would elbow me and hand me the phone because his friends were calling to talk to me. They wanted to talk to Raphael. Yeah, or they to talk to yeah. Me. yeah. Did that happen? Rob's a Rob's a great guy. He's one of the best in the business, obviously. Uh, did any did your son ever do that? He's like, "Hey, Dad, come on. They want to hear Lionel." Uh, not really. You know, the funniest thing. All three of my kids, my oldest one is 50. Mm -hmm. My daughter is 50 years old. And when she was little, it was the same with her as when the other kids came along 15 years later and, and they were little. Uh, you'd think they would do that, right? Hey, dad, do that voice for me, this and that. My kids, and I'm kind of glad they were like this. They would like, if, if I were reading a book to them when they were all small, I would read, I'd say, and then the wicked old witch came in and said, they would always go, Dad, Dad, just read, the, just read the book. Really? Yeah, yeah. I, then I go, okay, makes it easier for me. But it was so funny because you know you hear actors say this all the time uh, when they get home. Their kids are not impressed with what they do. Yeah. You know, and uh, he, he's your dad. You know, and sometimes it, I, I know kids probably even get tired of their friends saying. Uh, uh, I, I, oh, I heard your dad, mm -hmm, your dad, your dad, your dad. I would get, I would get upset with that. You know, what about me? You know? Yeah. So, um, no, but they, they didn't, uh, call now that they're older, <clears throat> my son Tanner is now uh, 32 mm -hmm. and married and found out yesterday he's going to have a baby awesome. in Katie, whom you met just a minute ago. On yeah. Here. My wife's name is Katie as well. Is that right? Yeah. What are the odds of see, so. Ah, okay, okay. So, so now that I think about it, now that he's older, uh, once in a while he'll meet somebody, you know, a new friend or something, and they'll, they'll find out, that, and he'll you know, they'll say, "Oh, can I just call him and say hi to him?" You know, so, <laughs> or have him call me or something like that. And of course, I, I love to do that. You know. Have you been reached out by what's that service? Is it Cameo? Have they reached? Yes. out? Yes. Yeah, and I I think I'm going to be doing that soon um, uh, because. Um, I recently acquired a um, uh, an agent, if you will, for appearances for comic cons and yeah. signings and things like that. You know, and he's working right now on uh, uh, you know getting me set up on cameo. Have they uh, have Have you done a book yet? A book? You mean, did I write a book? Yeah, or read a book. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> I mean, it's twenty twenty. I mean, uh, what do oh, you want to start with first? <laughs> what? Uh, Funny you mentioned that because that's one thing my kids are always bugging me to do is write a book. Yeah. About 
because I, you know, I've been in, I've been doing this business uh, almost 60 years. Wow. I started when I was 15 and I'm 73 now. So that's, well, and you don't look like it, man. You got some, great thank you. Ideas, so. Well, you know, I, <laughs> it's that uh, blood racing through your blood, right? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Um, but I, um, what was the point? See, now I'm, body's still good, but the brain's gone. <laughs> Uh, uh, but yeah, whatever you said, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, we true. Talking, that's true. We were talking about a, a book. Oh, writing a book. Yeah. yeah. Well, my kids, you know, have heard the stories over the years. When I was in radio, I, you know, I started out as a disc jockey, mm -hmm. and um, where at? well, I started in Peoria, Illinois. Okay. That's right across the Illinois River from where I'm from, a town called Pekin, Illinois. I think that's where. Uh, isn't that where? Uh, oh shit! And I'm gonna look like a horrible person. Jake and Elwood Blue, uh, Jake Blues and um, and Elwood Blues, aren't they from Peoria? Peoria. Uh, I never heard that, but uh, but maybe. Well, I mean, the care. I think the characters out of the Blues Brothers. Oh, oh I see what you mean. Yeah. The Ackroyd and, and Belushi's, but yeah, the characters, characters. Yeah. I never, I never noticed that they may have been. I mean, been. I'm pretty Richard, sure. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. So. Yeah. Richard Pryor was from Peoria. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, he was from Peoria, and um, well, of course, a lot of famous people. I'm trying to think of who was from Peoria. <laughs> Well, Senator Everett Dirksen, who was one of the top senators back then, was from was from Pekin. I was his I was his paper boy, as a matter of fact. Yeah, how did he tip? You know, <laughs> you're getting you're scaring me now, man. I was just gonna say that I was his paper boy, and about a week before Christmas, he was home for the holidays. I guess his sister, his twin sister, yeah, the poor thing. Uh, <laughs> I mean, he she looked just like him, and if you remember what he looked like. <laughs> Anyway, um, so I so I'm 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 doing the uh, collecting. My, you know, once a week you go around deliver the paper, and then you say you owe me for this week, you, you know, twelve yeah. cents, something like that. I knock, and he, Everett Dirksen answers the door, and of course back there everybody knew him, especially in Pekin. You know, he's this towering man, and he had this great voice. In fact, he did a couple of record albums called yeah. uh, uh, "These Are the Gallant Men." That was one of his albums. So. He comes to the door and I look up and I say, oh, Merry Christmas, Senator. And he goes, Merry Christmas, young man. I told him what he owed me and he gave me a dollar tip. This is in like 19, oh God, 60, 1960, something like that. Yeah. And uh, I'll, I'll never forget that. Not a great story, but it means a lot to me. Hey man, that's what we're here for. I thank you for... <laughs> I always like it when when stuff comes up, you know, organically that you didn't think you were going to talk about, and you guys share. Yeah. I always really appreciate you guys. You know, it's uh, you guys are human, but you know, for uh, for a lot of us, you know, you're our you're our heroes, you're our icons. So it's always nice saying like, "Oh man, this guy is this guy's human, just like me." You know, so oh, I'm I'm glad you said that because I'm I'm always glad when people tell me that. I, I hear that hear that a lot. You know, he's just a regular guy. He's just, and I love hearing that because. You know, it could be where he could be. You know, the guys, regular guy that played Lionel. Yeah. Kids did not like him reading funny voices and books. That's all I wanted to do when my, when, cause I had a 10 year old. So That's whenever, right. whenever we would read, I'd want to sit there and try to do voices. And he would just look at me. He's like, just stick to your regular oh. job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So he's really good at keeping me humble and keeping me grounded. So good. Yeah. Good. Um, but we got off on a little tangent, but do you, do you think a book is in the, in the picture for you? I don't think so. First, again, I'm too lazy. I mentioned that earlier, and I really am. I'm, I, mean, I mean, when it comes to work, you know, I, I like to think of myself as a, as a total professional. I don't show up late for anything, you know, and, and um, but when it comes to preparing for stuff, you know what I mean? Uh, see, the good thing for me was that I've always been in the business where, whether it was on radio or uh, I did, a, I did a, a game show, Bowling for Dollars, in New York for three years back in the 70s. Uh, I did a couple of films. But for me, uh, I made, I've made my living by reading something handed to me. Yeah. Somebody else writes it, mm -hmm. and I read it. I may be doing my own voice. I may be doing a character or something. But uh, I'm not really creating that. I'm just giving voice to it, you know. Yeah. Uh, so maybe because of that, or I become kind of lazy. And if somebody says, like you said, why don't you write a book? Immediately, my mind goes to research, uh, making calls to, to, to see if other people remember it the same way, uh, writing it down and over. No, I can't do that. <laughs> well, you got some, you got some kids that have mentioned it too, man. 
Uh, yeah, like, I know. Come help pops, man. We could sit here and type this out. We can we can record it. You can do an audio book. You don't even have to write anything down. It'd be interesting nonetheless. Well, uh, you know what? I'll think about it again. Yeah. And then uh, if you do decide, because I always ask a lot of you guys, if you guys have written a book and some have, some haven't, um, mm -hmm. you know, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of fans out there like myself that if you threw it up on Kickstarter, we're going to sit here and, you know, pump those numbers up and, you know, yeah. get money put into that project. So if it is ever, you know, out there and you feel like doing it, you tired of being lazy, as you say, um, you know, it's, it's always something to look at. Um, but yeah. So, uh, Thank you. I'll do that. Thank you. But you just gave me a great idea for a, for a title. Tired of being lazy. <laughs> it writes, it writes itself. Yeah. There you go. Here's my book. So, <laughs> So, you know, uh, we talked about your son earlier just a minute ago, but I want to talk about your daughter just for a little bit. Sure. I have two. I have two daughters. Well, Carrie is Carrie is the one, yes. you know, Deputy Trudy. Um, yeah. When this show came on, I think I was 15, 16, somewhere around there. Reno 911 kids, if you're, uh, yes. you know, not paying attention or you just don't remember the show, which shame on you, you should remember the show. <laughs> well, it's uh, back on now, you know. Oh, it's yeah. I'm getting, I'm getting, trying to get Carlos on. Uh, I can't pronounce his uh, last name. I can't it, either. Yeah. Eben so like, yeah. Eben he played Rocco and Rocco's Modern Life. And there's so many other yeah. characters. Um, yeah. so they're circling the wagons now. They're busy, but they're going to come on uh, at a later date. Um, but I was not ready to watch this show when I first saw it. I was like, oh man. And for the longest time, I thought this was shit. This shit was super real. And it was just like yeah. the crazy things that happen. And then you find yeah. out it was scripted. And I'm like, man, these guys made gold. Uh, how did, did, did her seeing you play, you know, characters that was that the bug that bit her, the Hollywood bug or. I'll tell you that in a second, but first of all, it's not scripted. What? Reno 911 is totally ad lib. Really? Yeah. They talk about, they'll talk about, they'll have a session and they talk about uh, what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. That part is written the you know but the but the dialogue itself that's all ad lib because they're all brilliant they're brilliant ad libbers that is amazing when you yeah. think of how funny this damn show is and then how long yeah. it lasted and it's coming back and these guys are just riffing off these guys and girls are just riffing off of each other oh yeah that's right that's what they're doing is is that your know, sidebar for just a second because i, I want to you know go a little bit deeper in this um obviously there's stuff that's written and then there's stuff that's not written do you yeah. see this very often? Like what they're doing is just hundred percent ad-libbed. I mean, oh, no, I've never come across that before. Um, in a show like that. Yeah. I mean, there, there have been shows where there are, <clears throat> where there are uh, comedy groups that all ad lib on stage. Yeah. You know, in fact, that's, that's where these guys all met. Yeah. The people from Reno, mm -hmm. uh, they met at NYU back in the late nineties and, um, or the early nineties. And, um, 11 of them yeah. formed this this um, improv group called the new group because there was a group called the group which but they were graduating <laughs> so they, they were the new group and they started performing and they started getting very popular around manhattan you know little clubs in the basement of places you know and yeah. like that and um the day they graduated from nyu they signed a contract with mtv mm -hmm. to do a show called the state uh, well, the first show they did was was You Wrote It, You Watch It on the state. That was um, produced and written, I think, by, or produced by uh, John Stewart. Yeah. Then they gave them a show of their own, but they wanted to change the name from the, the, the new group mm -hmm. to the state. And that's when the, the show The State began. So they, these people, 11 of them, one girl and 10 guys, and to this day, 30 some years later, uh, they're working together all the time. Whenever you see one of them in a movie, you usually see two or three others. If you see Carrie in a movie, it's usually with Ken Marino or Ben Garant and Tom Lennon, you know. So it's what, I think it's one of the most incredible stories in, in show business that I've ever heard anyway, is that 11 people who go to college together and form a group, 30 some years later are still, you see them all together in movies and TV shows and things like and, that. And crushing it. So, I mean, yeah. it's, it, like I said, it's one of those ones that I thought would a hundred percent was real. Like it was just mm -hmm. crazy stuff that happens. And then you talk about, oh man, this is just all of it's off the cuff. And then you, you go even deeper into them. And then you're like, yeah, yeah, these guys have been together for 30 years. You're like, holy shit. 
It just yeah. it's like layer, 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 man. It's fantastic. Yeah. Um, how, how early did you know, like when when uh, you know when she was born or when she started growing up, that she was going to go the same route as you or acting into that world? Uh, another great question in your never ending series of great questions. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm serious. You asked some great questions. Carrie, at about the age of 10 or 11, I think, mm -hmm. maybe 12, uh, asked me if she could start auditioning for commercials. Okay. Uh, because she had been going with me, you know, from each of my kids when they got to be about, uh, well, big enough to, I could, you know, feel comfortable them walking with me in the streets of New York yeah. City. Uh, so when they got to be about seven or eight, I guess, I would take them with me uh, to auditions and recording sessions and things mm -hmm. like that. At one point when Carrie was about that age, she said, dad, uh, could I, I want to be in show business too. I want to, and I went, oh boy, here we go. <laughs> I was torn between this thing because I, I don't want to tell her, no, no, you can't do it. I would never do that. Uh, but on the other hand, just like most actors, when asked that question, no, I don't want my children to be in show business. Yeah. Because it's a tough, tough business. The rejection is incredible. Yeah. Um, uh, if you're lucky, you, you know, you, you get a little bit of work and if you're incredibly lucky, you get to, you know, 30 years later, talk about your career to somebody on, on zoom. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, uh, and most of us don't want our kids to have to go through that. What we went through. Uh, so what I did was uh, my agent's name is Don Buckwald. I'm one of the top agents in New York, not just for animation, voice actors, but you know, uh, a lot of big actors and people. And uh, I said, I'll tell you what, and, and Carrie, Carrie knew Don very well. We were family friends. We go to Christmas parties together, you know, they come over to our house, Don and his wife. So I said, I tell you what, let's ask Uncle Don. And whatever Uncle Don thinks, and I, I knew she respected him too, mm -hmm. then that's what we'll do. And I swear to you, I won't prep him for it. I won't say, tell her you don't, she should tell her she shouldn't do it, you know? And I didn't. So I took her into his office let them alone and we went out. They came out smiling and she said, dad, I've decided I'm just gonna stay in school. I mean, you know, just go to school. And Uncle Don says, I, I should do like do plays there and take all the speech classes they have, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, do things like that. And then after I got out of school, I'm gonna start being an actress. And that's what she did. And that's to this day- That's a way to look at it. It's such a young age too. Yeah, and she's she's glad yet yeah, to this day that she waited a little while, you know. So that's that's how that. Uh, well, you asked me about uh, when did she decide to go in or something yeah, like that. When the yeah. Hollywood bug bit her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, so that was that was it for her. And my son Tanner, uh, just a, two or three years ago, decided he'd like. Of course, he was, you know, uh, twenty nine thirty. Yeah. But he decided he wanted to do some some voiceover work. So I got him uh, with Don Buckwald as a client and he did a, th a couple of things, you know, but then uh, he decided he wanted to move on to something yeah. else. Well, at least he got to try, you know, it's right. just, at least he got to try. back and you're 50 and you're like, oh man, why didn't I try? You know? Exactly. Yeah. Um, so you said you were in, uh, in New York in the studios and stuff. Um, what are, are there any big differences from uh, an East coast to a West coast studio, as far as, you know, your experiences? Uh, my experience is that there, there, you wouldn't, you'd have to ask me what city. I mean, you, they're they're identical. <laughs> say that way. In LA, it's a little more laid back. You know, uh, the the uh, mood, and the vibe, yeah, everything's very relaxed. Yeah. Hey, man, how you doing? Yeah. welcome <laughs> to LA, dude. You gotta love it. <laughs> and in New York, it's all right. Let's get started. Hey, hey, yo, oh yeah, all right, boom, get it done. <laughs> Jesus, now you can talk if you want to. Forget about. It. <laughs> wonderful people but uh, but they, they, the studios look the same yeah you know and uh, they, they use the same equipment mm -hmm. yeah now which one which i'm a food guy so what side of the country do you like food from when you were working in, in la and stuff did you have better food when you got out of the studios in new york or la i i prefer uh, food in in uh, new york only because um uh in la it's a lot of avocado and a lot of uh, kale. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a cheeseburger guy, you know, and steak and potatoes guy. 
I'm from the Midwest, you know. So I would say, uh, if I had to decide where to eat something, it would be in New York, but it doesn't mean LA food's no good. I just, I, the things I would pick on a menu tend to be on the menu in New York more than they are in LA. I'll say it that way, say, not get in trouble with LA. <laughs> now, are you still out on the West Coast or are you back at, back East? No, I've never been working. Well, I, I'm in New York. Yeah. Uh, I've always, well, I worked here for 45 years in New York. And the only time I've worked in LA is uh, when I went out there to do some Thundercats stuff. Yeah. Well, if you ever get back out there, it's not in LA, but it's in San Diego. It's a fantastic place. Uh, and you like cheeseburgers. So you, 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 it's right up your alley. There's this place called Hodad's down there in Ocean Beach. Um, I've heard of it. Uh, started out as a, uh, like a real surf place, right? They're still a big surf town. Um, and they started out of their band and they do the best way on how to eat a bacon cheeseburger. So they take their bacon, they chop it up, right? And then they boil it just a little bit and then they throw it on a flat top and then they press it. So it's like a bacon chip. Mm -hmm. So on your bacon burger, instead of pulling out a whole piece of bacon, cause it's not cooked properly. Yes. Bacon bite <clears throat> in each bite. Oh, oh, wow. That's a free advertisement for Hodad's cause they're my favorite burger in the entire country. And I've had them all over this place. Fantastic restaurant. I'll try it. Ho dads, right? Oh, man, man. Okay. Um, yes. Are we nearly done? I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I wish I would have ate lunch too. Cause my kids been, my kids, we were doing some yard work right before here. Uh, Cause it's real nice in Florida right now. So it's like 75, 76 degrees, not too hot. You know, skeeters aren't all over the place. So yeah, he's just knocking out some yard work and he's like, can we eat now? Can we eat? And I'm like, no, we got to finish this stuff and then we'll eat. Um, but, I, but I digress. Well, I wasn't hungry. I wasn't hungry until you mentioned, started describing that cheeseburger and, <laughs> well, it, and it laying sense. out the whole thing about the bacon. And so it's nice and so it made me hungry. Well, I can wax poetically about food is what I do for a living. Um, oh, really? Yeah, this is, a, this is a side job. I work in a Greek restaurant now. And, uh, oh, great. Okay. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's, it's interesting. <laughs> I love the restaurant. We've been going there. It was actually me, uh, my wife and I's first like date before we were dating. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so we went there with my mom because we both worked for my mom. Um, and that's kind of how we met. And then a few years later, we started dating. And then a few, you know, a little while after that, we got yeah. married with the kids. So great. Yeah, I mean, it's a, uh, it's a good time. Great place. Another free advertisement for the Greek village in Lake Mary. Fantastic. Uh, Did you cook there or what? Yeah. Yeah. I cooked there. I cooked ah, there. Too. Yeah. So make a nice moussaka, huh? Oh, Musica. I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. we got that one. Everything is uh, scratch made. Everything's made in house, you know, uh, and the guy's a great dude to work for. He's fantastic. Um, sure. But yeah, I, I don't know how we get, well, cheeseburgers is how we got on that menu or how, yeah. menu, how we got on that yeah. topic. Yeah. Um, so when, just to push it back towards uh, Thundercats and you, um, when it came back around and like I said, 2005, I think is when Family Guy uh, reached out. Mm, yeah, I think it was, yeah. Is that the last, or was that the first time since the original airing that uh, anybody reached out for you to do Lion O? Mm, good question. I, um, I, yeah, I think so. Yeah, you mean on, a, on another show? Yeah. Uh, uh, I think so. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I'm sure that was the first time. Yeah. You know, um, they had been doing, they had done a Lion O character on Family Guy two or three times before that. And Seth MacFarlane always did it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this time my agent called and said, uh, Seth MacFarlane called and wants you to reprise lion on a family guy thing. Yeah. And I, um, and uh, I said, you know, I love that show. I, I watched that show. It's incredible. And MacFarlane's a genius, you know, yes. I really think he is. I said, but to tell you the truth, I'm, I'm very, I'm very careful about things that I do as Lion O or, yeah. you know, and the whole Thundercats genre because the, le the legacy of it means a lot to me. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I, I don't ever want to do anything that's going to, you know, um, make fun of the show or detrimental to that character. Yeah. Yeah. Or be something they, you know, do something they wouldn't do that's because it's nasty, you know, or something like that. And they had a lot of nasty stuff on Family Guy, but I loved it. But I said, um, I, I tell him no, because I, I, that, the way I feel about, you know, Thundercats. And my agent said, well, okay. My son overheard me on the phone and he said, he said, dad, dad tell Don you'll call him back. I said, okay. He said, dad, you got to take this. Yeah. Family Guy is big time movie stars are asking to be on Family Guy. It's like Simpsons, you know, a lot of stars like to be on, yeah. on Simpsons. 
because it's a great show and it's it's very prominent. And I said, uh, I said, okay, I'll tell you what, have them send me. I called my agent back and I said, have them send me the, uh, the script and I'll read it. So they sent me the script and I read it and I said, absolutely not. I'm not going to do this. <laughs> because if you remember the episode that I was on, it's Lionel and, um, I'm sorry, it, it's, um, who's the, Peter, the, the character, the ca character in Family Guy, uh, Peter uh, Griffin. Yes. Yeah. Peter, yeah. So in, in this episode, it's, it's Peter uh, Griffin and I think um, oh, one of the other characters, and they're, they're in San Francisco driving along, and Peter Griffin says, boy, I bet you find a lot of strange couples living together in this town. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and... Um, they immediately shoot to a an interior of an apartment yeah. where Lionel and Snarf and Chitara live together. <laughs> <laughs> One day, uh, Lionel is just kind of standing there, you know, thinking about daydreaming or something, and Chitara comes in the room, and she says uh, um, something something inane. You know, how you doing? Okay, okay. Oh, she she says to him. Um, What's the matter? Something wrong, Lionel? And he says, "No, I'm just. I'm getting the feeling that Mumra is up to something, and we all know that can't be good. Something like that, you know." So she says, "Yeah, okay, I'm going to the can." So she goes in the bathroom, closes the door. Lionel looks around and takes out the Sword of Omens and says, "Give me sight beyond sight." <laughs> At that point, Snarf comes toddling through and says, what you doing, Lionel? And he says, oh, nothing. Just, I was, uh, you want to get stoned? <laughs> and that's when it ends. So, I mean, I laugh at it now thinking back on that, that, that I thought that was too raunchy or whatever, you know. Yeah. So I finally said to my son and to, and to Seth McFarland, I said, I'll do it. I'll do it. But if I start getting an email from fans, of the original show, the fans of the original show and, and they're, they're hurt they're you know i'm gonna kill you never did get one bad review it was just everybody loved it you know and then we were talking about it after that my son and i and i said gee i really thought so. some of the fans of thundercats saying you know some of those kids are going to get upset he said dad those kids are 30 years old now and watching family guy yeah and in the back of my mind i guess i had this this image of, uh, I don't want to do these, these, you know, kind of off color things because yeah. the fans the little kids will be offended by, you know, I don't want to do it in front of little kids. Yeah. He had to remind me that <laughs> those kids are growing up now. Yeah, <laughs> and the know. really little kids, the really six and seven year old kids, hopefully they're not watching family guy anyway. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it wouldn't surprise me in today's time. Uh, you know, I started mine with it at, you know, just a few weeks ago. And then I'm sitting here watching, I'm like, man, I don't think like I watched this at his age. I was like, I don't think he's ready enough for it. You know, I don't think he's a mature enough to know that some of the yeah. stuff just, you're not supposed to say some shit like this. At yeah. school. I don't want that phone call. So I was like, we'll, we'll give it another couple of years. Still a fantastic show. Seth is outstanding. Yeah. Um, is it normal for you guys as voice actors, because you hear people like Seth and yourself, you guys can go these so many different ranges with your voice. Um, is it normal for you guys to play four and five characters in a show or do they try to only keep it to one or two? An animated series? Mm -hmm. No, it's no. You, you usually do several characters. For example, in Thundercats, there are only five of us. Yeah. Did every, yeah. every voice you heard on Thundercats mm -hmm. over 130 episodes. Yeah. Yeah, um, occasionally they will bring in one person because they've got a very special character that, and, and they've got an idea that his voice would be great for this. But we had that happen maybe two or three times in the whole, the whole 130 episodes of Thundercats where they brought an outside actor in who was not in the, you know, the group. Yeah, the original the cast. Uh, do you know, speaking of Seth MacFarlane, do you know the story about him in 9-11? No, I don't think so. He was scheduled on a flight, one of those flights that went down and it went, went into the World Trade Center. And he was on his way to that flight and got, the guy was driving in a limo, I guess. Yeah. And uh, well, back then it probably wasn't a limo, but you know, this was a 2011. Right? Was Family Guy on then? 2011, I think yeah. it went off and then came back. Oh, 2001. Yeah. 
uh, it started in 98 and 99, somewhere around there. It had, yeah, I guess it did. Uh, yeah. Canceled it and did. then came back years later. So, yeah, it doesn't really matter, but I just uh, like to talk a lot. Um, <laughs> so he was on his, on his way to the, to LaGuardia or probably Kennedy and uh, got caught in traffic. Yeah. And terrible, terrible traffic. Knew he wasn't going to make it. So he called and said, give the seat away. And that was one of the planes that went down. Isn't that insane? Yeah. Can you imagine that in the back of your mind the rest of your life? It's just, well, I mean, I guess it would make you and force you to live life. You know, you always hear it. You see it in movies, cartoons. Man, I wish I would have did this. I wish I did that. <clears throat> yeah. Um, and it's, yeah. it's insane that it's such a young age because he was, what, in his 20s at that time? This is almost Probably. years ago. Probably, yeah. You know, so it's just sitting there thinking like, shit, man. And then you yeah. look at his, you look at the the iterations of Family Guy since it started to I think it's been canceled and brought back two or three times at this point. Same thing with Futurama and Matt Groening, um, you know. So it's it's crazy that he sits there and he could have died nineteen years. Oh, yeah. It would have just been that name. Family he would have. Guy wouldn't have been the juggernaut juggernaut that it is now. <clears throat> yeah. And then, you, like I said, you see it in the progression in his in his seasons. It gets crazier and crazier. It's like screw yeah. it, man. I'm not even supposed to be here. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to sit here and do whatever we possibly can and make people laugh. Um, I guess when you live by that philosophy, I mean, it's yeah, kind of makes sense now with as crazy as the show has gotten as far as popularity and yeah. content. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I, I don't think I ever heard that story. That's a, that's a fantastic story. Um, that. um, yeah. Have you been approached again to go back on Family Guy since? Or Yes. Uh, <laughs> pardon me. <clears throat> a new Thundercats, Thundercats Roar. Mm -hmm. came out <clears throat> six months ago or so yeah earlier this year and i played jaga on the first yeah. few episodes of that and what was that, that like i'm sorry what was that like putting that putting that shirt back on that thundercat shirt <laughs> uh oh i've got a great shirt to show you if you want to see it in a minute. yeah 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 please uh, it's in my closet right right here let me get it right now no worries yeah i'll be back See the whole thing? Oh, yeah, that's fantastic. Nice little training day reference. Training day, yeah. <laughs> Panthro and uh, Lionel. <laughs> that's fantastic. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, getting back to the story. <laughs> what were we talking about? Uh, what oh, was uh, doing that shirt back on? Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Um, it was fun. Again, it was the same thing as when 2011, the 2011 version came out of Thundercats, and they you know, asked me to do Lion O. I got that, thought it was a great homage. Yeah. And all this. So when this one came up again, I wasn't surprised. I'm was surprised they were doing a new one. Yeah. But uh, again, I felt really great that they were, you know, carrying on a little bit of tradition, a little legacy, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so I only did about three episodes of that. Yeah. I don't think, I don't even know if it's still on. Uh, got a lot of, got a lot of bad, some people didn't like it. A lot of people from the original show didn't like it i mean well, the I mean, people who watch the original show everybody's entitled to their own opinion it's what makes this country so great you know yeah. you can have an opinion you can have and not like <laughs> and like something yeah um what i've found is growing up at least that i, mean, I don't give a shit what people watch man if you like it you like it yeah uh, me it's the same thing because you're on teen titans go as well so it's a lot of the same thing with that cartoon series the teen yeah. titans go the thundercats mm -hmm. um I think they're fantastic. I love the comedic, like the uptick in comedy in these shows. Um, I think they're fantastic. But I've also learned, and like I said, my 31 years of life, that there's just things that are and aren't made for me. And whether I like it or don't like yes. it, you know, I don't have to sit here and voice my opinion either way. Um, yeah. Of course, if I don't like something, I'm just not gonna, I'm not gonna say yeah. anything. About it, I don't really care. Yeah, right. Um, if I love right. it, that's all you hear about, you know. Um, but yeah, it's just, I'd never understood that. Like a lot of hate for something that it's not made for you, man. You got the original show. You've got the show that 2011, check that out. If you don't like this one. That's, that's what I have said to, to people who ask me about it. You know, why are you doing this show? It's, I don't like it. It's not, you know, I was an original Thundercats fan and I tell them, you know what? You've still got that. Yeah. You can watch every episode we made on YouTube free if you want. Mm -hmm. You, some people have DVDs and things like that. You're always going to have, that's always going to be around. You can watch it because that's what you like. Yeah. 
Thundercats Roar was made specifically for a much younger audience, yes. right? little kids, just like Teen Titans Go. Mm -hmm. um, and people complained about the about the um, the illustrating, you know, the animation. Yeah. Uh, that kind of very minimalist, yeah. wacky kind of animation. But anyway, that's 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 what I tell them. Like you said, you'll always have those, and this is for somebody else. Yeah. Just don't watch it if you don't like it. I mean, I, I don't under, it's just this climate. Um, I'm not getting political at all. Just this climate. You just mm. can't have a differing opinion with people these days. Yeah. You think one yeah. way, if you don't have team think, then you're wrong. Right. So it's just, right. it's just weird in today's day and age with as open as everything is, whether you can, I connected with you, I think through Facebook, <clears throat> I saw your yeah. name. I was like, yeah. oh man, he's got a Facebook page. Let's just go ahead and send this cold email, this cold call type of thing, but with words mm -hmm. um, typed out. So I'm like, Hey, you want to be on a podcast? You're like, yeah. I'm like, holy shit, this stuff works, right? <laughs> what have I done? What <laughs> have I done? <laughs> so I was like, not going to prepare and all this other stuff. I got to write some stuff down. Um, you know, I always, you know, I have like a few points that I want to hit, make sure I got my spelling right. But that's pretty much all I do for these shows. Everything is either off the cuff or, you know, we lead down stories. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, just guys realize that it's just, just not made for you, or even if it is, and if even if it's not. Um, it's, if it's not targeted, targeted towards you, it's somebody else's lion -o, right? Yeah. You know? yeah. You're going to be somebody's lion -o, You're not going to be somebody's lion -o, and vice versa with all these characters. So grow up, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Um, but that's neither here nor there. I love the new one. My kid loves it. We always good. Love it. Same thing with Teen Titans Go. We'd love that one. It, yeah. it's, I like that silly nature on characters that used to be, <laughs> you know, would be considered dark, you know, back yeah. then. Yes. Yeah. But uh, what was... Did you want to do, you know, another Lionel, or did you know going in you, you were going to do a different character for Roar? Uh, well, I knew from the beginning. Yeah, I mean, they, they asked me specifically for that to, to yeah. do to do Jaga. They may have asked me because <clears throat> I actually did I actually did Jaga on one of the on the box set. Oh wow! I didn't know uh, that. because because by the time we they put together the box set, Bob McFadden had passed away. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and so had uh, Earl Hammond, mm -hmm. who was Jaga. Yeah. I, I don't know why I mentioned Bob, but uh, Earl had passed away and um, they, they wanted to put, uh, uh, you know, one of the extras on a, on a DV box set. You always get some extras yeah, that you, you, know, you didn't see on television and all that stuff. And uh, they wanted to do a, a game where kids could play a game, uh, I guess, uh, I can't really remember actually what it was, but they needed the voice of Jaga on yeah. something. And they came and asked me to do it. I said, I tell you what, I will go home and rehearse it, practice it. because mm -hmm. I'd never tried to do that voice before. And I'm gonna record it. And, I, and if I think I can do it and do service to uh, Earl Hammond, mm -hmm. I'll do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm not gonna do one that doesn't sound like him, you know, because he was Jaga. And fortunately, I was able to, you know, it was not that hard a voice to get because it's mostly just a whispering. Uh, mm -hmm. But I know you must be calm in times of, you know, whatever. I'm going <laughs> to <die. laughs> so, so they may have, uh, meaning when I say they, I mean, maybe the um, producers of the Teen Titans Roar, maybe one of them had, had heard me do that on the box set. Yeah. Who knows? I mean, it's like I said, it's always great when they reach back out. Yeah, sure. Um, so sure. we're getting we're getting towards that that end of our time. Yeah, I know. It's been great. It's OK. It, it's been a fun time. I, I can't say like I always try to end these conversations with one or two of the same questions, but I always either reference and different just in case you guys have answered it or, you know, just a nice little wrap up thing. Now, you said earlier when I asked you about best week ever, that was the most fun you know, for, as far as the characters go, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. When it's all said and done, and then you push that that boom mic up for the last time, right? You're no longer doing any voices. You're sitting back, enjoying your third volume of "I'm Too Lazy," my life story. <laughs> um, when you hear the term Thundercats and Lion O, what what's kind of thoughts are brought to to you know the forefront? What's what's get elicit? You know, what's the first thought that comes to mind? First thought that comes to my mind is over the last 35 years, I've gotten so many emails 
and before we had emails, letters, people would write from people who now are in their 20s, 30s or whatever, and tell me in a certain degree that they loved Thundercats because they, they didn't have a very good childhood. Yeah. And some of them would give more detail. Thankfully, some of them wouldn't, but I knew what they were talking about. Yeah. And they said, whether they were abused, you know, beaten, who knows. I, but so many of them have said, but that half hour that I was in there watching Thundercats, all that went away. Yeah. And it, and it, a lot of people tell me, uh, help them get through their childhood and the show, the show, you know, yeah. but, but they apply it to me and I, I appreciate that. Um, that's what I think of when I think of, of um, Thundercats, the original Thundercats, especially. Um, oh, that those, it means so much to those people. If, if an animated, if a cartoon television show to this day means that much to them, mm -hmm. then the legacy of it and protecting it means that much to me. Well, I mean, there's so many times where you've seen people just bastardize something. And, and I'm so glad that anybody that's reached out to you for anything dealing with the Thundercats has had the utmost respect for, like I said, that original cast and for you guys. Me too. Uh, you know, I can't thank you enough. I know you said maybe later you might work on a book, um, but is there anything <laughs> you're working on now that we can help, you know, put out there, tell people, or where can they go to find you to see what you're doing? Well, uh, in my house, but I, you can't all come at the same time. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> well, you know, obviously with, with the COVID and everything, we're, none of us are doing too much. Yeah. Um, uh, so I haven't done much, any work, I think, since probably uh, April, something yeah. like that, six months. Mm -hmm. Um, I've auditioned a couple of times from home, you know, but uh, didn't get those jobs. I mean, that's the nature of our business. You, they say if you're an if you're in my business, a voiceover actor, and you land or are hired for five percent of the things you audition for, or ten percent, you're doing all right. <laughs> that's so my point. Thing. My point is that, that you you do a lot of auditions before. Yeah. You know, even even once you become fairly well known as I have in the business, and um, so yeah, so I haven't been doing a lot. I'm still doing, but generally, once once this is over, I'm still doing uh, Skittles, the Skittles yeah. commercials. Mm -hmm. um, if people don't know, I'm the guy at the end of every commercial says, "Feel the rainbow, taste the rainbow." <laughs> been doing that for about twenty years, um, and that's about all. I mean, I, I haven't done anything else. Well, hopefully with Thundercats or, you know, yeah. maybe a push, hopefully once all this stuff is, you know, uh, gone away, or at least we've gotten some kind of containment on this COVID shit, um, yeah. we'll see you more or hear you more, you know, um, through all of your workings right now between Skittles, Taste the Rainbow, yeah. Yeah. Thundercats Roar, and the original Thundercats, ladies and gentlemen. I had such a <laughs> blast doing this. Uh, hope to have you down on down the road. Um, are, Love you, to. Uh, are you guys, um, I know you said you're on a few things, but is there any social media sites that you guys like to go and hang out on? I'm on Facebook uh, and I have an Instagram account, but I haven't totally figured out how that works yet. That's okay, me neither. I just sit there and post stuff. And when I can't figure it out, like yeah. you know, Katie, I have my, <clears throat> and my wife show me like, how do you do this? I just yeah. walk around until somebody helps me. So uh, yeah. it helps having a crew. Right? So I want to thank you again. You